spend some time in prayer before we jump into God's word. Lord, what, a, what an afternoon to be able to come and gather together as your church. Lord, I know there are many people here this afternoon that have met, never stepped foot in the church or are watching online have never watched a church service or this is their one time a year where they come. I pray, God, that you meet them in their place tonight, that they, they, they would understand the hope that can be found in you. Lord, I pray for others of us that have been here for years and years and years, service after service, hearing the story of your birth. I pray it would never grow stale with us, that it would make us alive. It would help us to have joy, remembering that your son came as a seeking and saving Savior and that he is going to come again. Lord, I pray as we open your word that you would speak to us wherever we're at, that we would be moved by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't keep Christ in Christmas. That's the point. So I got my uh, Christmas decorations down out of the attic. Many of you guys have done this. I was uh, over at the storage unit a couple weeks ago, and people were taking out all of their Christmas stuff. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to you know, set up some things here. we got some Christmas decorations to set up. We'll just put that there. Okay. Yeah, we, we do this, right? We get out all of our Christmas stuff. Okay, you just go there. Okay. We get out all of our Christmas stuff, and uh, we try to get stuff out of boxes that have been there all year long, and we, we take the, the manger out. You know what? I'm just going to keep that in the box. It doesn't want to come out. That's all right. And we set it up for a time, right? We take it out for a season. And you may hear during this season, don't uh, keep Christ in Christmas. But we believe that's actually the problem not the solution, that people just keep Christ at Christmas. Just for this time, we think about Christ, and all the rest of the year, we forget about him. We want to encourage you this Christmas Eve to don't keep Christ in Christmas, to enjoy him every day and forever. And that's the action step that we're going to work on this evening, is that we're going to be able to enjoy Jesus not only during this Christmas season, but every day and forever. The scripture that we're going to be looking at this morning, I mean this afternoon, is in John chapter 1. And you heard the Christmas story from, from Luke, from the worship team. And I want to give a different perspective on the, the Christmas story from John. This is what it says in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. There was a Greek nobleman in, in, um, in ancient times around 500 B.C. His name was Her Hermocletus. And Hermocletus said that everything in the world, whether it be mathematics or physics, how everything came together was by one thing, and that was logos, or the word. That everything was held together from the beginning through through the beginning of things all the way through the present time and into the future was held together by the word. As you look at these, this scripture, it says in the beginning was the word. If you actually look at the literal rendering of that first sentence, it actually says in the beginning, the word was existing. See, even before anything existed, Jesus existed. Even before anything existed, was even thought of before time even began. In the very beginning, where there really was no beginning, because it always existed, was God, was Jesus. He came on this earth as God. Psalm 90 says this. This is not going to be up on your screen, but listen to what it says uh, from, from the Psalms. It says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth of the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God has always been, and he always will be. And we celebrate this time of year, Jesus coming on this earth, but he's always been. And that's why it's important that we don't just keep Christ in Christmas. We recognize that he has always been God and since he always has been God and his nature is good, we can trust in him that he has a plan for each and every one of our lives. The scripture continues on. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. 
It actually says in, in, in the beginning. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created all things. He is here, past, present, and future. And that's so important because false teachers from the very beginning all the way till now will say that Jesus is not God. Jesus is not deity. But we see very clear, clearly from Scripture that Jesus is God. And that's so vital for each and every one of us because if, if he wasn't God, then he couldn't take away our sins. If he wasn't God, then he wouldn't have been able to, to fulfill what he came here to do, to take away the sins of the world. This little baby that came for us, he was a seeking and saving Savior. He was God in the flesh, and he's always been. And he was there at creation as he created everything here on this earth, as he created his masterpiece, humanity, you and I. Jesus was there. And we celebrate him this time of year, but we shouldn't box him up the rest of the, rest of the year because he is God. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Don't we see that this Christmas? Don't we see that in the darkness of our, of our world? The darkness doesn't understand the light that can be found in Christ. They, they, we don't understand that we can find hope and joy and peace in Jesus, and that's why the church is so vital. That's why it's so important that we don't just gather on Christmas Eve, but we gather throughout the year to proclaim the light that has come to earth. Very God, very God, coming on this earth, pursuing us. He came to witness, to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world uh, was made through him, the world did not recognize him. It came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Let me illustrate this another way of what John is saying here about Jesus coming to the earth as a light. How many of you in your homes have electricity? How many of you have electricity? Okay. I thought all of you. Now, in order for that electricity in your house to work, in order to have light on your house, in your house, what do you have to do? You have to turn on switches, right? You have to actually do something and turn it on. See, the light is accessible to every single one of you. It's the same thing with Jesus. Light of Jesus is accessible to every single one of us. Yet some choose to live in darkness. Some choose not to turn on the light. Some choose not to find that light in darkness. And that's why it's so vital and so important for the church to proclaim Jesus. The church not to keep Christ just in Christmas, but to proclaim him all year long. And if you're walking in darkness, if you're wondering where to find hope, if you're wondering where you can find peace, you can find it in the light of Christ. All you have to do is flip on the switch. It's accessible to you too. The scripture continues. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, it was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we've all received one blessing after another. For the law, of, the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Christ Jesus. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at his Father's side, has made him known. Do you realize the love, the compassion that the God that created all of the universe has for each and every one of you? He created all things. I mean, think about how powerful and how mighty the creator God is. But he loved us so much that he didn't leave us in sin. He didn't leave us in suffering. He didn't leave us without hope. He sent his very son, who was indeed fully God, 
and fully man. And he came on this earth pursuing us, even when we reject him, even when we run from him, even when we sin. And each and every one of us, just like we all have electricity at home, each and every one of us is a sinner. Each and every one of us falls short. Each and every one of us messes up. Merry Christmas, guys. You all deserve coal, all right? And I do too. We're all sinners. We desperately need Jesus. And that's why we should enjoy Jesus every day and forever and, and not keep Christ just in Christmas, but enjoy him every day. During the 16th century, England proclaims an official church uh, uh, state, a state church for the entire uh, country of England. And all other religious teaching was strictly forbidden. So those who really wanted to worship Jesus and not be under the state's rule had to come up with ways that they could celebrate Jesus all year long. And the 12 days of Christmas was one way that they did this. The 12 days of Christmas was actually written in code to teach all their kids about the truths of Jesus, that they wouldn't just keep the truths of Jesus just during that Christmas time, but they would remember them all year long. And so as we're looking at this scripture, remembering that Jesus really was God, remembering that he was in the beginning, I thought it would be good to walk through these, these 12 days as a reminder to all of us of the truths that we find in scripture from these 12 days. In fact, James chapter 1, verses 17 and 18 says, every good and perfect gift is from above. And so when we think about the gifts that we're getting during Christmas time, I want us to think about the gift that we get in Jesus. And so I have some people that help me out with the 12 days of Christmas. And so let's do the first one. Partridge in a pear tree. That's right. Partridge in the pear tree. Partridge is a very valiant bird. He's willing to fight for the death to defend his young. And the reason why they chose Partridge in the pear tree to help their kids remember all year long that Jesus was willing to die for each and every one of us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall never perish, but have eternal life. That partridge in the pear tree is a representative of Jesus coming to this earth, willing to die for his young. Remember that all year long. Okay, the next one. Two turtle doves. That's right, two turtle doves. These turtle doves represented the Jewish families that would bring turtle doves to God. They would do this for hundreds of years. And the reason why they did that is because they were bringing sacrifices for their sins. Imagine if you had to do that in church now. I mean, Christmas Eve would be a whole lot more interesting, wouldn't it? You guys would all be bringing your animals to me and I'd be slaughtering them up on stage. That would be fun, wouldn't it? I'm so thankful we don't have to do that anymore because of what Jesus has done. Look what the scripture says in Luke chapter 2. When the time of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to pre present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. This is a reminder for us all year long that no longer do we have to bring sacrifices because Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. All right, the next one. Three French hens. I like that one. Kids playing video games. I just was like, say three French hens. They're like, whatever, pastor, just get out of my way. I, I want to keep playing video games. Well, three French hens, the French hens were extremely valuable during that time, during the 16th century, and only the rich uh, could afford them. And these three French hens represented the incense, the frankincense, the gold, and the myrrh, the valuable gifts that were brought uh, to Jesus by the wise men, remi reminding us of how valuable Jesus is for the whole year, for our whole lives. All right, the next one. Wow, echo on that one. Four calling birds. That's right. The four calling birds were a representation of the four gospel writers. There's one gospel account, but four writers of the, of the gospel. And it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it was a representation of the four calling birds of 
that account of the gospel where we could find hope. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That's the purpose of why this Bible was written, so that you could know how you could have eternal life, so you could know God, so you could know Jesus, so you could enjoy him all year long. All right, the next one. We missed one. There we go. That's right. I like that. They had a little tune on that one. Five golden rings. Of course, the golden rings were very valuable. These represented the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These books were the, the creation story, the story of history, the people of Israel, the foundation of the one story of Jesus. And as we talked about earlier, Jesus was right there in creation. And this whole book is the one story of Jesus, that we would enjoy him today and forever, not just at Christmas time. Okay, now we can do the geese. That's right, the six days of creation. That's what that represents, the six geese of laying. When the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit created all things, it was a reminder that those six days he created all things, that he's powerful and mighty, and that we should enjoy him forever. Okay, this next video I like the best. I'm a little partial to my own family there. Uh, they represent the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that were listed in Romans chapter 12, verses uh, 6 through, through 8. And listen to what the, the gifts are. We all have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, uh, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, uh, let him do it with all of his strength and all of his might and all of his power. This is what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to use the gifts that God has given each and every one of us. That's why uh, we can enjoy him forever. Remember that God's gifted each and every one of us to use for his glory. And the swans are a reminder of, the, of that truth. All right, next one. Those kids had no idea what they were saying. They were like, what is Pastor Eddie telling us to say? Maids of milking? I don't know. That is strange. Those represented the eight unique teachings of the Beatitudes in Matthew uh, chapter 5. And the, the milk is a representation of us coming to Jesus, drinking from his word, understanding that he's the one that can give us strength, enjoying him all year long, remembering that his blessings look a little different than the blessings of the world as we read through those. All right, the next one. Nine ladies dancing. <laughs> I couldn't find nine ladies to dance, but I thought, Gina, you know what? Gina has the power of nine women, so she, she, can, she can dance. She can dance. The nine listed there are the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit that are in Galatians um, chapter 5. And, and when we see the, these fruits... Um, we see the, the strength that we can gain from them. And this is uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. We don't just need those things at Christmas time. We need them all year long, don't we? And the only way we can have them is through the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through us. And it was a reminder and should be a reminder of us to worship Jesus all year long. All right, the next one. Ten lords of leaping. Wait, wait. I'm going to leapfrog you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> all right. Great job, guys. Ten lords of leaping. This represented the, the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were the law that reminded us, they're the, they're the, it's the tutor that reminds us that we fall short. Each and every one of us breaks each and every one of those commandments all the time. And it's a reminder for us, not just during Christmas time, but all year long of our need for Jesus. 
that without Jesus, we would be hopeless. We would be in our sin. No chance of overcoming that, that we desperately need his grace and his mercy so that we uh, can overcome our sin through his strength. All right, next one. 11 pipers piping. 11 pipers piping. The 11 apostles that were chosen by Jesus that remained faithful to him. They were like children following a piper as the disciples follow Jesus. And that's what we should be like with Jesus, that we should dig into his word. We should get to know him more, not just during Christmas time, but fall after him all the days of our life. Fall close to him because that's where we can find life. That's where we can find hope. That's where we can find peace. All right, last one. Well, drummers drumming. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Again, we couldn't find 12, but those three were doing it strong. So there, there you go. The drummer beat out a loud, steady rhythm for the marchers to follow. And the Apostles' Creed has 12 really strong truths that are listed. And we'll sh I'll show you the Apostles' Creed here up on the screen. Said for generations in the church, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. Next one. There you go. And is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic uh, church, the communion of saints, and forgive us sins, the resurrection of the body. We believe in all of these things. And this is what the church has believed for centuries because they're biblical truths. And we believe that they, they are true and they're the foundations for us to remember all year long, not just at Christmas time. And so what do we do with all this? Well, I hope that we don't just pack up Jesus uh, when Christmas is over. I hope we we'll remember that Jesus is the word and that we remember that because Jesus is the word that there's good news and bad news. First is bad news that men don't know the God of the Bible. There's the God of the Bible and then there's the religion of God that we think God is that's not really the true God. There's the God that we make up in society. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is we can know the true God. We can know that he came on this earth and was fully God and was fully man. That he came on this earth with a purpose as a seeking and saving savior. He came to do that because he loves us and because he cares for us. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 9 it says, For in him all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. When we think of Jesus coming to earth as a baby, that's God coming to earth. He was the word that always was, even in the beginning. He was before even the beginning. He's always been and always will be, and we can find truth and grace in him. Jesus is the word, and Jesus is the life. The bad news is, is that man sinned, and because man sinned, death came into the world. But the good news is, is that Jesus came to save sinners. Jesus says, I'm the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. It's so important that you understand that. In our world of political correctness, we want to say there's all different paths to heaven, but the Bible is abundantly clear that there is one path to heaven because there's only one that came to die for our sins. There's only one that took on all of the suffering that we should have been suffering. There's only one that came as a seeking and saving Savior. There's only one God that came from heaven to earth, and that is Jesus. And he is the way, and he is the truth, and he is the life. And the way that you go to heaven, the way that you experience hope, the way that you experience joy is by putting your faith and trust in him. He is the life. Jesus is the light. The bad news is, is that there, are, there is darkness now. And it's very clear in our world. And when you walk around in darkness, only bad things happen. If you have kids in your home and you ever walked around in darkness and stepped on a Lego, it stinks, right? It's horrible. It's a horrible thing. 
to step on a Lego. It's a horrible thing to walk in darkness. You never drive your car in darkness without the lights on because only bad things can happen. Yet many of us walk through life without any light. And we wonder if there's hope. We wonder if there's a chance for peace. We wonder if there's a chance for us in our lives. And there is. The good news is that there is Jesus, that he is the light of the world. And that Jesus came as the Lamb of God. The bad news is that there is sin and that we've sinned. The good news is that Jesus came to take away all of that sin. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, each and every one of us. But Jesus came on this earth, lived a perfect life, died a death on the cross, and rose from the dead. That if we believe in him, if we trust him, just like Julia has done, we can have eternal life. That's the most important decision that you could ever make. Whether you're watching online or you're here in person, putting your faith and trust in Christ. Not just taking him out, taking out the de decorations for a short time, but enjoying him today and forever is the most important decision. The light is available to you. Won't you turn on the switch? Don't walk in darkness anymore. Jesus has done all of the work. You don't have to earn your way to heaven. You don't have to try to do all these amazing things to get God to love you. He already loves you. And our part is just to believe. To believe that Jesus lived a perfect life. That he died on the cross and that he rose from the dead. Have you ever believed? Have you ever put your faith in Jesus Christ? Doesn't it sound awesome to go from dark to light? Doesn't it sound awesome to go from hopelessness to hope, joylessness to joy? Doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect in your life. Certainly, there are many people in here that are followers of Christ. We, we still go through issues in our life, but ultimately, we have hope and a foundation that only can be found in Jesus. And so I want to give you an opportunity this evening, before we close, to put your faith in Jesus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a prayer for you. And these, this is not a ma magical prayer. It doesn't matter the words here. It's about you putting your faith and trust in Jesus. And what we're going to do is all of us in here are going to bow our heads and close our eyes. And we're going to pray. If you're already a believer in Jesus, you're going to have lots of other, you're going to be praying for lots of other people in here that don't know Jesus. And if you're not a believer in Jesus, but you like to become one, you like to put your faith in Jesus, you can say this prayer with me. And then with no one looking around except for me, I'm going to give you an opportunity to raise your hand. And the reason why we do this a couple times a year is because I know it's hard. To go from a place where you're trusting in yourself, where you're in darkness, to say, I'm going to trust in the God that came on this earth. I'm going to trust in Jesus. I know sometimes it's hard to admit that, but I want you to admit it to one person at least. I want to be able to see you so that I can encourage you and, and help uh, you grow in your faith by praying for you. So I'm going to pray this prayer right now. If everyone would close their eyes, bow your heads, and we're going to keep them closed to give people a chance to respond. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I've sinned against you in many ways. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. I want you to come to my life and be my savior. Forgive me of all my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. Come into my life and be my Lord. Help me become the person that you want me to be. Before I say amen, everyone keep their eyes closed. And if you prayed that for the first time, would you raise your hand so I could see you and so I could celebrate with you? You raise, you go ahead and raise your hand nice and high so I can see you. I see. Oh, there's a couple over here. Right in the center. One, two, three, four. Praise God for you. Right, five, six. Right here in the center. Praise God. Over here on the right. Just praise God for you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right, everyone can open their eyes. Let's give a round of applause to all those that held up their hand. Praise God. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. It's the most important decision that you could ever make. Now listen, I don't want to pressure you that, that raised your hand. But if you did raise your hand, we would love to help you grow in your faith. If you just marked on your card, on the connecting card, that you raised your hand, one of the people on staff, or, we're not going to call you up on stage or anything like that, but one of the people on staff will get with you to help you grow in your faith. If you have already put your faith in Jesus, enjoy Jesus forever. When you're putting away all your Christmas stuff, you're putting it back in storage, don't put Jesus back in storage. Let's leave Jesus out. Okay? Let's, let's keep him out all year long. Let's not keep him in Christmas. Let's come and see him. 
Let's, let's follow him. Let's become fishers of men as we enjoy him more and more each day. As we enjoy him for our lives. Let's not keep him to ourselves, right? We've been able to find hope and joy and peace in him. We found eternal life in him. There are people all around us that don't know where to find that hope. They don't know where to find that joy. Let's be people, let's be the church that doesn't just keep Christ in Christmas, but enjoys him all year long. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm so thankful that you came and pursued us. I'm so grateful that you are seeking and saving Savior. I'm so thankful that you came on this earth for all of us that have trusted in you. For the people that raised their hand this afternoon, I'm just overjoyed that you came on this earth for them that they would not be stuck in their sins, but they would know eternal life. Lord, I pray that as we, as we're ending the Christmas season after these next few days and putting away all our decorations, let's not put you away. Let's enjoy you today. Let's enjoy you forever. Help us to do that by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.